Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to derive market supply. In price taker markets, perfect competition, a firm supply curve is its marginal cost curve. The market supply curve is a horizontal summation of each firm's supply curve. Problem 1. There are 100 firms in a perfectly competitive market, each with the following marginal cost, given by this equation. We want to drive the market supply equation where the quantity, the quantity supplied in the market is a function of the price. So first thing we recognize is that in perfect competition, price equals marginal cost. This is how firms maximize profit. So we're going to replace the MC with P. And doing that, we're now going to solve this equation for Q. Moving some things around and multiplying through by 50, we get the individual firm's supply. Now to get the market supply, recall there are 100 firms in this market, each with this supply that looks like this. So the market supply will be nothing more than 100 times lowercase q. So substituting in lowercase q, which is 50p minus 125, simplifying, here is the market supply. Example 2. There are 200 firms in a perfectly competitive market, each with the following marginal cost of mc equals 1 plus 2q. Once again, we want to drive the market supply equation where the quantity supplied is a function of the price. So as before, we're going to set price equal to marginal cost. So replacing MC with P and now solving that equation for Q. Moving some things around and dividing through by 2. We have the individual firm's supply. To get the market supply, we recognize that there are 200 firms exactly like this one, so 200 times lowercase q gives us the market supply, in this case of 100p minus 100. And let's go ahead and graph that market supply. Uh, the graph of the market supply of q equals 100p minus 100 is over here on the right. Uh, what I like to do in graphing market supply is solve the market supply equation for price. So I'm just going to solve the market supply for price. And that's technically the inverse market supply equation. So dividing through by 100 then, we have the inverse market supply equation. And so if Q is 0, we nicely see that the vertical intercept here is 1. And this has a slope of 1 over 100. If you plug in a Q for Q equals 200 into this inverse market supply, you'll see that price does indeed equal $3. If you plug 600 units in this market supply, 600 for Q, you'll see that price equals $7. All right, in our last example, there are 100 firms in a perfectly competitive market. 50 are located in the north and 50 in the south. The northern firms have a marginal cost given by the following, while the southern firms have a different marginal cost given by this equation. We want to drive and graph the market supply equation. So let's start with the north, setting price equal to marginal cost, and solving for Q. We have the individual firm supply in the north. And to get the market supply in the north, since there are 50 firms, just like this one, it's just going to be 50 times Q, sub, Q subscript N, or 50P. And now for the south, same method, price equals marginal cost. Solving for Q, we have the individual firm supply in the south. And since there are 50 firms just like this one, the market supply will be 50 times Q subscript S, lowercase Q subscript S and you have the market supply in the south of 50p minus 100. And just rewriting those equations. 
So one thing to note, if the price is less than or equal to $2, the quantity supplied, the total quantity supplied in the South by Southern firms will be zero. So here is the market supply for the Southern firms. If P is, say, 1, quantity supplied is not going to be negative 50. It's just going to be zero. Therefore, the market supply, if price is less than or equal to 2, is just going to consist of the Northern firms which is just the supply given by Q equals 50P. Now let's get the market supply if the price is greater than two. If the price is greater than two, southern firms will be bringing the product to the market as well as northern firms. So we're just going to add up the market supply from northern firms plus the market supply of southern firms. Doing that, we have the market supply if the price exceeds $2. Let's go ahead and graph this market supply. So to graph the market supply like we did before, I like to solve for the inverse market supply. So if price is greater than 2, we're going to take this equation right here and solve it for P. So if price is greater than 2, we take this equation down here, solve it for P to get the following. And if price is less than or equal to 2, we take this market supply equation here, which just consists of northern firms, and solve that for P. So we have our inverse market supplies. This is what the graph would look like. Let's explain it in a little bit more detail. So if price is less than or equal to 2, the only firms that supply this product are the northern firms. And so this is what the market supply would look like if the price is less than or equal to $2. That's going to be this section right here. It has a vertical intercept of 0 and a slope of 1 divided by 50. If the price is greater than $2, both the northern and southern firms will be supplying the product. And in that case, we saw the inverse market supply looks something like this. So at a price greater than $2, the market supply is going to be this flatter looking curve. Notice here the slope is just 1 over 100 this time instead of 1 over 50. And we could verify uh, by plugging some numbers in here. Uh, if we plugged in, for example, Q equals 400, the price would be 5. If we plug Q equals 100, in fact, in either equation it doesn't matter, the price will equal two dollars. Okay, that's it. I'll stop here.